it's instructive to think about human reason as a kind of light. Light enables our eyes to have access to the world. It illuminates things so that they may be seen by us. Likewise, by the light of reason, human beings are able to see or to understand that which is intelligible in things. By means of physical light, we're able to see physical things in reality, a tree, a dog, a human. By means of the light of reason, we're able to see the intelligible natures of things in reality, treeness, dogness, humanness. The mind has the fundamental and irreducible power to abstract the universal natures of things from particular instances. And this is just to say that the human mind has been made to understand that which is intelligible in nature. And by the way, this is what makes the human mind unique and utterly distinct from the rest of the animal kingdom. Non-human animals lack the light of reason. The light of reason also makes the human mind irreplicable by any machine. No matter how sophisticated artificial intelligence becomes in mimicking certain kinds of human thought processes, it will never be able to attain the ability to reason. So by the light of reason, we come to know that which is intelligible in nature. Now, as we've seen in an earlier episode in this series, by the same light, we can also come to know some things about the source and creator of nature. Although we cannot see God directly by means of the light of reason, we can see him indirectly through his effects. We can reason from the creature to the creator. We can reason from the effects to the cause. And of course, what we can know about God through the light of reason, as we have seen, it's going to be limited. Yet again, as we've seen, there is another kind of light that is given to believers. It's a light by which we can see more, cle uh, more clearly the nature of the divine and see more clearly divine truth. We call this the light of faith. When God grants to the believer supernatural faith, he infuses into the mind of the believer a share of a light that is higher than the light of reason. The light of faith allows uh, us to know things of God and of the supernatural dimension of reality, um, knowledge that is inaccessible by the light of reason alone. Now, it's important to understand that the light of faith does not diminish or destroy or replace the light of reason. Rather, the light of faith strengthens and perfects the light of reason. According to Aquinas, there are three kinds of intellectual lights available to believers, and they come in three degrees. Beginning from the highest degree and descending to the lowest, they are first the light of glory. This is the light that the saints have in heaven who enjoy beatitude. Then there's the light of faith. This is that supernatural faith that's infused into the believer. And then finally, there's the light of natural reason. This is a natural light that all of us share insofar as we are human beings. These intellectual lights are not completely distinct and separated, but exist on a kind of continuum, with each light being strengthened by the one above it. There is therefore no competition or conflict between them. Instead, they are hierarchical and complementary. And as I've said, the light of faith strengthens the light of reason so that our reason is better able to see or understand the nature of reality around us. By the light of reason, humans are able to see deeper into reality than all other animals that lack reason and that rely on sen sense perception alone. But by the light of faith, believ believers are able to see reality in an even deeper way and in a way that is beyond the power of natural reason alone. Now, as I've been trying to show throughout this series, there is, in fact, a deep harmony between faith and reason. Faith and reason are complementary. They are not contradictory. And to drive home this point, I want us to consider some practical ways in which faith and reason supplement each other. The first thing to say here is something that we've said before. Faith and reason are consistent with each other. Since God is the originator and ground of truth wherever it is found, and since all truth is from God, all truth is one. All truth is God's truth. The truths that we know by the light of faith 
and the truths that we know by the light of reason come from the same source. God is the author of nature, God is the author of scripture, and God is the author of human reason, which can know them both. It's a serious mistake to think of human reason as being inherently hostile to Christianity. Although the unbelieving will of man is hostile to God since humankind's fall into sin, God has implanted within the human mind the ability to grasp the principles of being that ground logic in all rational thought. Right reason can therefore never be in opposition to the truth of faith. Aquinas reasons, quote, The knowledge of the principles that are known to us naturally has been implanted in us by God, for God is the author of our nature. These principles, therefore, are also contained by the divine wisdom. Hence, whatever is opposed to them is opposed to the divine wisdom, and therefore cannot come from God. That which we hold by faith as divinely revealed, therefore cannot be contrary to our natural knowledge. Aquinas continues. He says, quote, From this we evidently gather the following conclusion. Whatever arguments are brought forward against the doctrines of faith, are conclusions incorrectly derived from the first and self-evident principles embedded in nature. Such conclusions do not have the force of demonstration. They are arguments that are either probable or sophistical. And so, there exists the possibility to answer them." End quote. Aquinas makes two claims here, each quite forceful. First, he says that if something is contrary to our natural knowledge, it's also contrary to divine truth. Whatever is opposed to reason is by default opposed to faith. If what we believe is illogical or irrational, we can be assured that it does not contain divine truth. It does not, it cannot come from God. Second, Aquinas says that if we come across some piece of reasoning that seems to be at odds with the truth of faith, we can be assured that there is a problem with the reasoning some kind of malfunction has occurred. Something has gone wrong in the argument. There's been a, a failure to, to grasp the first principles, or the arguments are weak or indemonstrable. Faith and reason are, therefore, never truly or actually in conflict. There's a fundamental unity of truth um, between faith and reason that's grounded in the fundamental order of reality itself, so that there cannot possibly be something that is true according to faith and yet false according to reason. Again, this is because all truth is one, and truth cannot contradict truth. We can also see that reason supports faith. One way in which reason supports faith is by confirming the truths of faith. As I've said, um, by the use of reason, we can come to know some things about God that are revealed to us by faith, wholly apart from divine revelation. Beginning with our knowledge of beings in the world, we can arrive at truths about God through the use of reason alone. Truths such as the fact that God exists, that he is one, that he is simple or not composed of parts, that he's perfect, that he's good, that he's infinite, that he's immutable, that he's eternal, and so on. Reason can also marshal many signs and evidences of credibility to confirm the truths of faith from various areas of inquiry, such as philosophy, science, and history. Another way in which reason supports faith is by aiding in the interpretation and understanding of what God has revealed in Scripture. Not only does reason provide us with the hermeneutical skills necessary to rightly interpret the text of Scripture, but it also helps us in our understanding of that text, especially where it's unclear, indistinct, or underdetermined. An often overlooked and underappreciated fact is that the Bible does not contain instructions on how to interpret itself. Instead, we must bring our hermeneutical principles to the text of Scripture in order to know what it teaches. And where do we get these interpretive principles from? Well, the only place we can get them from, human reason. Moreover, reason is absolutely essential to the task of systematizing the teaching of Scripture into a coherent and consistent whole. As I've pointed out before, um, the Bible can, can see, be seemingly inconsistent in places. For, for example, there's places where God is depicted in anthropomorphic or human-like ways, that he has a body part or that he sits on a throne. Yet there are other places in the Bible that des describe God in strictly theological ways, that he's immaterial, that he doesn't change, that he's infinite. And again, 
The Bible itself does not include instructions on how to deal with these various depictions. Rather, we have to look to reason, specifically to philosophy, to sort these things out. Reason also defends faith. In addition to providing many positive proofs, arguments, confirmations, evidence in support of faith, reason can also refute arguments and objections that are brought against the truths of faith. For example, a common objection often brought against Christian theism is that the doctrine of the Trinity, that there are three persons and one God, is logically incoherent. It's logically incoherent, we are told, to say that God is three persons and one person. This is contradictory. Yet, using the principles of reason, Christian theologians and philosophers can show that there is no contradiction in the doctrine of the Trinity. The law of contradiction states that something cannot be and not be at the same time and in the same sense. If Christians claimed that God was three and one in the same sense, then this would indeed violate the law. However, Christians do not say this. We say that God is three persons in one essence. He's three who's and one what. And this is clearly not a violation of the law of contradiction, since God is not one and three in the same sense. As Aquinas says, by the light of reason, we can show that arguments contrary to faith are incorrectly derived from the first and self-evident principles embedded in nature, that the conclusions drawn do not have the force of demonstration, or that the arguments are either probable or sophistical. Finally, again, we see that faith strengthens and perfects reason. As I noted already here, the light of faith improves the light of reason by supplementing or augmenting our understanding of reality. The light of faith illumines everything, even that which is properly known by the light of reason. For example, reason raises many questions that it cannot answer. We see this in the entire history of philosophy. Questions like, what is the purpose or meaning of life? Why are we here? Where are we going? What happens after death? These are the most important questions in life. Although reason can ponder these questions, they are beyond the power of reason to answer. Only faith can provide the answers. God himself must reveal them to us. Now, by the use of our rational faculties, we can come to know many things about the nature of reality. We can, for example, investigate the principles of being. We can come to know the nature of things in the world. We can determine what it means to be human and what it means to be a good or a flourishing human. We can know the laws of thought. We can discover the workings of the physical universe. And we can even reason back to the, to the first cause of it all. We can do all of this through our natural capacity of reason. Human reason really is a remarkable thing. However, although reason can come to know the nature of reality as we encounter it through our senses, it can only know in part and not in whole. It cannot know the true or the final nature of reality. For to know the true or final nature of reality is to know it in its relation to its final end, in its relation to its creator. But this is only possible by the light of faith. It is only by the light of faith that we can see all things in relation to God. The universe can ultimately only make sense when we see it through the lens of faith, when we read the world in the light of God. Only by faith can we come to know the ultimate order, balance, purpose of the world. Now, since to know the true nature of things in their proper order is the essence of wisdom, to know the nature of things as they are ultimately ordered to God is to ascend to the very summit of wisdom. As I've tried to show in this series, there is a deep and fundamental harmony between faith and reason. Faith is not the enemy of reason. Faith is not the end of the pursuit of truth. Rather, faith is the fulfillment of reason, and it's the beginning of true wisdom. Perhaps the best way to end this series on faith and reason is with a quote from C.S. Lewis. He wrote this, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else.